There, I knew it was the devil because everywhere I would go, it was there. Yeah. And when you're pacing for three hours and you're casting down and you're not seeing the result of the devil fleeing, yeah. it, it can play some definite mind games on you. And that was the beginning uh, of deliverance for me. That That is what I called when I was delivered. It was, it was, it was 2012, right there. Um, did the addiction stop? No. Now you have to break free from some things. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another amazing episode of Winning Conversations. Um, let me start off by introducing our guest host, Hello. Mr. Jackson. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Oh, my gosh. It's like looking into a darker, tanner, better looking version of me. <laughs> <laughs> the prerequisite. But we the can't all, have, we, uh, you know, you had a hat on your last episode and you're hosting. I did. But I have seniority. You so do. I, <laughs> and you don't mess with that. I, you know, I got to cover this dome. Yeah, um, Tanya said on one of the previous episodes when her husband was there, the prerequisite of being on here yeah, as a male is that you have to be bald. I so think I that's, fit right in. I, that's, so bald men out there, <laughs> you got a chance. Um, but I want to get through. We have an exciting episode. Uh, Mr. Phelan, how are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? So if you don't know, this is I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, we have, I kind of want to skip to what we're talking about. And I want to really like, this episode is not just for men. I know this is Father's Day. We just had an episode last week was for Father's Day. But this topic is a an extremely serious topic. Um, as much as we yes. joke around and we have fun, but this episode I am very excited for because it's something that impacted me personally. And I think it impacts a lot of people and yes. we just don't talk about it. Um, and so I kind of want to let you introduce the topic yourself, if you could, and kind of give us a reason why we're here. Lord have mercy. Um, we're going to talk about pornography. Yep. I mean, just you, you can't uh, skip around it like a lot of people do. You nope. just want to just say it. It's, yeah. it's pornography. Yeah. Um, the reason this came to being actually was uh, I was talking to Tanya because you had had um, – Stephen and Summer on the show. Yes. And Summer had mentioned uh, being set free from alcohol. And I had told, told Tanya, I said, this is fantastic. Yeah. I love hearing that because what it does is it sets people free. Yeah. Yes. People who are addicted to it or have been addicted to it even. Because yeah. once you're, even when you're set free, there might be people who, who um, still feel some condemnation or some guilt. And, yeah. you know, the, the devil doesn't stop working just because you're set free from something. Sure, He's going right. to continue to play mind games and, and try to hit you as much as he can. So yeah. um, just hearing that was like, you know what, that's fantastic. And then so I told Tanya about it, and she said, well, would you like to share your story? And I said, sure, I would love to, love to share my story. Um, I think that's awesome. I agree with yes. everything you're saying, really. Um, and I think it's impacted a lot of people, um, if not – Everybody at some point in time, um, I had an issue, and I want you to kind of talk about this, like the setup, sure, um, and kind of define like what that is. <clears throat> when I, I don't know how old I was, I think I was maybe five or six or something. I got introduced to that through a, a neighbor friend who, uh, she was an older girl. We were just friends, but she brought me on over to the house, and there it is. I there was like, is. wow, what is that? So, and I was, <laughs> I was young, you know what I mean. But I think more so that wasn't. Oh, this would be good. Should I share? So I, I think <clears throat> that wasn't like a one-off thing that just happened. It just, oh, man, the enemy was like, oh, I think I'm just going to attack him with this. My dad has had similar issues somewhere down the line. It might not have been with that, but it was in some way of within that area. So it was like a generational thing. Mm -hmm. And so the setup, you know, can you just talk a little bit about that of how or what that was? Uh, sure. Um, just a backstory a little bit uh, on me. I was I was saved at seven, <clears throat> uh, filled with the Spirit, I guess, around 15. And um, I grew up in church, and I was never the, the person who desired to drink, smoke, cuss, you know, a party, all of that kind of stuff, even pornography. I'd have kids at school, you know, come up and show you a picture and – it's like, get that away from me. Yeah. My dad was a construction worker, so you can imagine, uh, especially at that time, being around it, uh, you'd go to places, and it would it would be there, and I would just, whatever, and walk away. Right. So it never bothered me. <clears throat> um, when I got into my 20s, uh, early 20s, I was working at a, um, 
I was working at one of my jobs, and uh, it was my day off, so I went in to get a salad. I worked at a pizza joint. Hey, now. And while I was getting a salad, this man across the, the room was sitting down eating by himself. And he looks at me, and he says, hey, why don't you come over here and sit and eat with me? And so I said, sure. So I went and sat down. And when I sat down, the first thing he said was, he said, you know what? He said, I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic. Mm. Just out of the blue. And he said, people around me would always go, why don't you just quit? Uh. But he said, it's harder than what they think because they haven't gone through it. Mm. Now, being the Christian that I was and, and growing up in church and knowing the word of God and, you know, um, but never being in a, a lifestyle alternative to that, you always think, why don't you just quit? Yep. Right, yeah. You know, because you know the power of the word. But you've never, you never fought, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so it wasn't until I was around 24, I'd come out with a first Christian CD before my wife and I were married. And uh, uh, I was working at, at another, a different place. And my manager was checking email at the time. And I had just gotten to the job to where I was doing some computer work too. And she said um, she would get e these emails. And while she's getting these emails, they're bad emails coming through. <laughs> and you would hear her in the other room going, ooh, oh, you know, just being disgusted. Right. I can't do this. I can't do this. Phelan, I need you to check the emails from now on because this, I just can't go through this. Oh, and I'm going, wow. no, hold on now. And I, and I even told her, I said, I'm in the ministry. Yeah. I travel and sing. This is this is what I, I'm not going to be messing with that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And so, again, you know, hearing it day after day, you're hearing her go, oh. Uh. And so, what popped in my head, wrong or right, mm -hmm. um, was, well, you know what? It's never bothered you before. So why don't you take the load off of her? Yeah. Yeesh, yeah. 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 And that was the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Started checking it, you know. And of course, back then. When you check things, they didn't have filters. I mean, they, the pictures were there. You know, you, you, it comes up, it's there. And so um, I, got, I got caught up into that mess. Mm. And um, it, it was a struggle, you know. It, it was one of those things to where, well, what is it? The book of James tells you, you know, you, you, you sin because of your lust, you yeah. know. And the yeah. more that you feed on it, the more you crave it, the more you want it, right? Right. But it was never one of those things to where I ever desired. And so when I would try to get out of it, um, I tried everything. Man, I prayed, mm -hmm. fasted. Um, every time the church doors, you know, altar call, I was down at the altar getting prayed for. I don't care what the altar call was, I went down for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to be prayed for. I want to be delivered. <laughs> how, many delivery, yeah, right, right. How, how many deliverance? altar calls can you get, right. you know, and you're still going down and going down and going down. And, um, I could not seem to break it, quoting mm. scripture, declaring scripture. And, uh, it was getting worse and worse and worse, right. uh, to the point to where I knew it was the devil mm. because everywhere I would go, it was there. Mm. I was a big camper at that time. I, I man, I lived my life doing like survival stuff and camping. I love that. Okay. So I would go out in the middle of nowhere. Lord, I got to get away with you on the weekend and just clear my head yeah. because the thoughts. I could not stop my thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I'm up in the middle of the night pacing for three and four hours, quoting scripture, casting down scripture, and and you know, you hear pastors say, "Oh, you you cast down that scripture, the devil will flee from you." And when you're pacing for three hours. And you're casting down, and you're not seeing the yeah. result of the devil fleeing. Yeah, it, it can play some definite mind games on you. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it just does. Yeah. It just does. Absolutely. And so I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. No, that's. And, and so uh, you know, I'm out there, and I go to start a fire, and there's a pornography magazine right there in the fire. Uh, somebody took over my Crazy. Christian website. Uh, used it as a porn pornography website. So my name, I had to, everywhere I went, I had to tell people, do not look up my name, wow. you know. Um, just on and on and on it goes. I quit a job once. We moved back to Texas, and I told the assistant pastor, uh, it, it was working for the oil field, I told the assistant pastor, look, this is what I've struggled with at this other job too. Uh -huh. I want to know 
that if I step on and I work for you, do I have to deal with this? Uh-huh. And he said, nope, you will not have to deal with it. Okay. Wow. Get in the gate, first day on the job, some guys pull up. Hey, man. I said, hey, how are you doing? You want some of this? And just lifts it up, you know, start wow. showing me. Wow. I could not escape it. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. I went, could not <clears throat> escape it. So I knew it was of the devil. Yeah. And, um, you know, no good thing is. Sure. You know? Right. So um, uh, just continuing to pray, continuing to seek God, uh, but not getting victory. You know, mm-hmm. and I know that there's people out there that that probably feel that way that they're trying everything that they know to do, but they don't feel like they're getting victory. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and so, what do you do in that moment? And so, I never felt like giving up. I knew God's word was true. Right. I had it deposited in my heart. I was not going to quit. Not going to give up. Had no desire. You know, even when I got married, had no desire to cheat on my wife. My wife is. I don't know if y'all know Natalie. Have y'all met? You know, You've heard of her. Yeah, I, yeah. I've seen her. <laughs> the most incredible woman in the world. Seriously, the most incredible woman in the world. And she's just, uh, she's awesome. Never had I desired to cheat on her or anything like that. I mean, right. this was an attack on my mm-hmm. mind. Yeah. And, and I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. And it was to do anything. The devil could do anything or try to do to stop the ministry and, and to stop my calling. Right. You know. Can you speak a little bit more about that as far as, because you make a great point of uh, the devil's trying to stop the ministry and stop the calling. Sometimes we think it's just something that you're struggling with and something you just got to get over, but there's a bigger picture to that. There's a, there's a way bigger picture. Yeah. And, and, you know, God has called all of us yeah. to reach certain people and to reach the community around us. Yeah. And um, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And the devil doesn't care what job you have or, what, you know, what color you are. It doesn't matter. He's going to want to stop the calling of God on your life. And do you think that this challenge um, is only like subject just to pornography? Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, no, no, not at all. Um, You know, pornography is an addiction, just like drinking is an addiction, just like smoking is an addiction. Overeating is an addiction. Not just overeating. There's a lot of people who are thin that are still putting tons of trash in their body, right? And so they, they... they don't want to change that, wow, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you can get into a lot of stuff. I mean, man, there's people that are addicted to getting tattoos everywhere. There's people that, there's addictions, gossiping, lying. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are that people get addicted to. Yeah. Pornography is nothing more than another addiction, yep. yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, and so it has to be broken off of you, but not just broken off of you, but now you have to renew your mind, you mm-hmm. know, and that's a process. Mm-hmm. So... so I really want to know, like, because obviously right now in the in the, your story, you're still struggling yes. against all scripture, against everything. You're standing, still standing, and not seeing the victory. Exactly. And, and I think that is a all too common situation for a lot of Christians who are in the middle of a struggle, yeah. an addiction, a battle, and they're every altar call, or they're they're every they're every yeah. everything they know to do, they're doing, and they're right where you're at, and not seeing it. Yes. What changed? Um, well, I'll tell you what changed. Um, can I back up a moment? And, Please, and, no, no. I, yeah, we talk about know. that for a second. You know, um, when you're a child of God, yeah, being in being in the ministry and growing up in church, you hear testimonies all the time, and most of the testimonies you hear are, "Well, back in my day, I was a partier," or "Back in my day, I did drugs," and then you know, God set me free, and God set me free, and God set me free. But when you've been a Christian all of your life. Yeah. And now you find yourself in a pit. Yeah. Um the condemnation. Yep. It, uh the that's hard to describe. And and I was talking with Tanya a little bit about this because I'm in the ministry, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm giving altar calls for youth or I'm talking with youth or young adults or or just people in general and you wouldn't believe how many people I've prayed for that have been set free from addictions. I was at Sonic. Uh, this was one story that just popped out at me. Um, I was at Sonic having my Sonic ministry, and I was at the drive through and the kid that was giving me a Coke, we started talking, and he said that he was addicted to pornography. And I said, well, can I pray with you? So at the drive through I prayed with him to be delivered. Now, he didn't believe in God, but mm-hmm. I just prayed for him, you know. Mm-hmm. And so around six months later, I'm walking through Walmart, and I hear this guy, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. And it was that, that kid. Yeah. And he came up to me and gave me a hug and said, 
dude, you remember when you prayed for me? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been it's been so and so many months. Never had another problem with it. Praise oh, God. Praise so, God. yeah, exactly. Praise God. But but the <laughs> yeah. flip side of yeah. that, the the yeah. flip side of that, of why is it that I'm pacing the floor, mm. praying, fasting, everything that I know to do, and I can lay hands on somebody or pray for someone and they're delivered, but I'm not. Mm. So, you know, a year goes by, five years go by, six years go by, eight years go by, and you're seeing people delivered and you're not, mm. and you're doing everything that you know to do. Mm. Um, the condemnation can weigh on you. Yes. Why, what are you doing in the ministry? Yeah. Yep. You know? You're not a faithful husband, that type of a deal. Yeah. And, and the weight of that is, is really strong. And, and even to this day, I'll tell you, even to this day, I have to fight that weight. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't. You know, you give it to God, but the devil will always come and try to put things in your head. Right. And so you're, you're constantly, we're in a war. We're, we're, called, we're in the army of God. Yeah. And if you're, if you're not fighting, yeah. then you got to... Think about what you're doing in your life, you know, because sure. yeah, yeah. the enemy's going to attack you. Yeah. So then, you. so then, just to circle back, then, yes. what was the breakthrough moment? What changed? The breakthrough moment. Oh man, um, when I was around 16, 17 years old, a lady came to our church. She was a prophetess, and her name was Aquila Nash. Okay. Um, and she never met her before, never seen her before, and she stood me up and said in the church and said that I'd graduate with honors and that I would uh, I see you playing music. I see you doing this. And so that was a big change for me, and that changed my life to where I went into towards the ministry. Mm. Um, so one day, um, I guess 20-something, I don't know. I don't know. I was 2012. It was 2012. Um, I've got it written down on, on a piece of paper on the bathroom mirror so that I can remember it and go, oh, man. Crazy. Um Family had left, I guess went to the store, went somewhere, and I'm at home alone. Well, you know, I get on the TV, just flipping channels to see what would catch my eye that I don't need to be right. messed up with, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I go across TBN, and Aquil and Ash is on TBN. And I was like, oh, I remember her. She was the one who prophesied, you know? So I thought, well, I'll just listen to her. So I sat down on the couch, was listening to her. And um, she had all these prayer uh, papers on the, on the table, going to pray for them. Mm. And she looks up at the TV, and she said, there's somebody out there. And she points her finger. She said, you've been struggling with pornography for so and so amount of years. Wow. And I was going, <laughs> you know, I'm <laughs> counting on my fingers, and I'm, I'm just like, you've got to be kidding. And she said, today you've been delivered. Amen. Mm. And when she said that, When she said that, I just broke down and hit my knees because I knew it was me. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you know, in your heart, yeah. when God's talking. And um, when I got up, I could think. I could think again. Wow. Uh, went to bed, no bad thoughts. Wow. Woke up, Praise. went the next day, no bad thoughts. And that was the beginning uh, of deliverance for me that that is what i call when i was delivered yeah, was was yeah, yeah. was 2012 right, right there yeah. um did the addiction stop no now you have to break free from some things and mm -hmm. i don't understand if 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 i knew all the answers i would love to tell them but i don't understand why some people will get delivered immediately and some people it takes years uh, i don't understand why i can be delivered but yet still fight certain addictions and certain urges. Uh, I don't understand it, but I've talked with people, you know, and, and so I called my, my ex-youth pastor, and I said, look, man, this is, this is what's going on. And he said, Phelan, he said, of course, he was an ex-pimp and all that kind of stuff. And he said, Phelan, I was uh, an alcoholic, and when God delivered me from alcohol, he said, it took several years for me to be delivered from patterns. Mm. And he said, I'd find myself going to Walmart, and I would look up, and I would be in the liquor aisle. Mm. 
So he said, you know, don't, don't freak out about all that. Mm. You know, you just continue to pray, continue to renew your mind, stay in the word. Mm. Um, and that was a big help. And there was another time I was hit really hard. And so I pulled over to the side of the road. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, I hadn't had this in a while. And so I called my father-in-law and he's a pastor, but uh, it's amazing how many people that you will know and you will walk life with, um, but when the rubber hits the road, they won't be beside you. Mm. And I had pastors turn, turn. I, I would say, hey, man, I need somebody to stand by me. Can right. you keep me accountable? You know, mm. and nobody, wow. <clears throat> gosh, nobody. Wow. So, you know, you're seeing Christians, you're trusting just gone, 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 and you feel all alone. Wow. So I called my father-in-law and I said, look, what, this is what's happening, mm-hmm. you know. How many other people do you know can call their father-in-law and say, this is this pornography thing is fighting me again. What's going on? Yeah. So uh, he's a martial artist like I am. And he said, Phelan, what's the first rule in martial arts? And I said, don't panic. And he said, exactly. Yeah. Don't panic. That's good. You know? And that was uh, those addictions and, the, and the, new, the new ruts, people call them. You know, you, you have a rut that you've done for however many years, yep. you got to get out of that rut. Mm. And so sometimes even though you're, you're delivered, you got a lifestyle, right? Mm. And that yeah. lifestyle has to change. And sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's jobs, sometimes it's just your everyday, you know, yeah. absolutely everything that you do yeah. on, on, because you find those patterns. Yes, those, um, those You can look key. at people with phones. I mean, how many people have a habit of just picking the phone up? Yeah. Hey, now. And looking, you know, you know what I mean? So uh, this is, hey, this is another thing that people can be delivered from that, that can be an addiction, too. That well, is a real addiction. Yeah, it is. Well, it yeah. is. Social media. Yeah. It's huge. The phone, not even social media, just, just the, the perma scroll, media, information. I yeah. mean, there's so much of it. And, yeah. and that's kind of, we're a little bit older than you. Um, so, you know, it's all right. It's all right. We let you come. <laughs> you put my bed <laughs> <on. laughs> We, uh. When you were, it was your age, like, and again, I, I, this, the pornography specifically was harder. Like, you had put forth effort. Now yeah. you just need internet. You know oh, yeah, I, you're I, there. I, like, it's just gotten so much easier, yeah. and it's so prevalent, and it's not just a man thing. It's yeah. it's not just men, it's women. Right. And the part of this that really struck a chord with me is that when you're trying your best and you're not winning that condemnation, like, a lot of people don't want to go to the altar call again. Like, they don't want to admit... I'm doing the same altar call again. Like that's a hard thing in Christian communities. Sadly, the place that we need to be giving the most love yeah. and care and compassion to people, we get very, well, you're a Christian. You should have it together. Mm-hmm. You, you're, you're in faith. You shouldn't, this shouldn't be a problem for you. Yeah. Especially ministry. Yeah. Good night nurse. You know what I mean? Like there are expectations. If you don't got it together, then how can, you know what I mean? It just right. invalidates everything you're doing. Right. right. And that's the enemy's attack. <clears throat> and so, I mean, pornography, Food. You name, insert addiction, insert exactly. that thing. Exactly. And it just weighs on you. Yeah. It's brutal. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I think of Elijah, and he's up on the mountaintop. <laughs> and he was not supposed to be on the mountaintop. If you go back and you read it, he ran because of fear, mm-hmm. you know. And God said, come over here, I'll talk with you. But he was on the mountaintop, and when he's talking with God, when God finally spoke, he says, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There's people down there that need you, mm. you know? Yeah. And so um, a lot of times we read these scriptures and we see these strong men of faith in the Bible, but then when you're dealt with somebody like me and you and you're fighting and you're a strong man of faith, sometimes I don't want to deal with you. Mm. I expect something different from you. Mm-hmm. But then I'll quote David to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're yeah. really good at weaponizing so, yeah, scripture. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, yeah, the condemnation, uh, and I would say, look, do everything you can to get free. Absolutely. Your soul is more valuable than anything else, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that you can possibly have. Um, where's your soul going to go? Who are you going to impact today? Mm-hmm. What is your calling? You know, so how much do you desire the love of God, but how much do you desire what God has given you? Right. And I'm not going to let the devil take that away. I'm not going to let him steal it. Yeah. And so uh, if you've got to go down to the altar 50 million times, you go down the altar 50 million times. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you've got to call somebody and say, pray for me, you call them, you know, and go ahead. No, no. I was going to say it's, it's the things that we do in community. I, I think that's where they're so important. You know, yes. having yeah. strong, 
Christians in your life, people of faith, yes. both sides, men, women, whoever you need that are there <coughs> for you, truly there for you. Because mm-hmm. every one of us hits hits a wall at some point in time with something. Yes. You know, obviously this was your struggle. And like, you're not yeah. the only one. If we throw a rock right now, I bet we hit a couple. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's, right. no it's just one of those things where we just don't talk about it. Yes. There's certain sins that we've gotten very comfortable with, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. They don't strike the same nerve. If someone's on drugs, you're like, oh, hey, now. <laughs> Knock that off. Right, right. You You know, but other ones where it's like, eh, it's awkward to talk about. I don't want to get in that business of like your business and like, you know, but it needs to be addressed. Yeah. Because that's where it dies is in the light. I think it's awkward because it hits everybody. Oh, yes. You know, alcohol doesn't, the effects of that might hit, hit me. You know, if you're drunk and mad or whatever it may be, it, it might affect me, but it doesn't affect me when you intake that. Right. But uh, when you start talking about sexual sins or, you know, things that hit everybody, mm-hmm. it gets a little awkward. It does. It can get a little awkward. It does. Uh, you know, one of the cool things that uh, about God, and I've got to hit this point, um, was for the, the time that I had, had gone through it to the time of, of even now in life. Because like I said, you, you, I still, it, it's amazing. God is so faithful, merciful, and gracious. And he's not here to beat you up. And you would be surprised if if I showed you or told you the amount of times where we would go to a church and someone would give a word of knowledge to us. And they would come up and lay hands and say, God just wants to let you know He's fixing to open doors for this ministry. He's fixing to, you know. Yeah. And then I would go to, to a place and I'd be at an altar call and someone would come up and and for the last two weeks I've been praying, God, I just want to please you. I can't please you with my thoughts. I can't please you with my, I, I want to please you, right. you know. Yeah. And um, then somebody comes up while I'm at the altar and they lay their hands on me and they say, God just wants to let you know that he is pleased with you. Yeah. And so over and over and over again, he never looked at you. He never looked at me. And somebody laid hands on me or praying, and he's going, you got to quit this. This stuff is, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Because those thoughts would be on your mind. Yeah. Those, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, he's going to read my mail. God was so, yeah. always looking to victory. Hmm. He already sees you overcoming, yeah. or he wouldn't be saying, hey, I'm fixing to open doors over here and open doors right. over there. It's he right. sees you yeah. as a victor. Yeah. And that is what, and, and he he doesn't look. And one of the prophecies, a, a guy came up to me and started prophesying. And uh, one of the things that he said was, God has seen your mistakes and he does not care about them. Mm. You're fixing to go back and impact blah, 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 youth or whatever. I remember that. <laughs> and, I, and, 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 sorry, and you just you, break. Yeah. You break yeah. because you're waiting for a slap across the face. The correction. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, or you're just going to have to sit down for a while, you know? And no, God's like, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward. Don't quit, move forward. Mm. It's yeah. this is like one of those topics that I we could talk, <laughs> we could not exhaust. It's like the scriptures. Yeah. This is such a big topic, and so I love what you've said today. Like I think it's so important that people hear what it's like to be in that situation, to not give up, right. and to keep fighting for what they believe is true. And right. so. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank the God. big thing that I want to close on, and I think this is a real important perspective for you specifically to, to share with us, is obviously the theme of the house and the question of the show is making winners in life. Yes. Regarding to this topic, what does that mean to you now? Well, you know, when my wife and I were here before, mm-hmm. y'all ask us the same question. And for me, it has not changed. Um, for me, it is don't quit. Yeah. Um, as, as a... And, and, and when you go back, you're going to hear me say the same thing. As a, as a martial artist, when you take the black belt test, it's four and a half hours of just getting exhausted and beat up. That's what it is. And it's not for you uh, to beat everyone else up. It's a matter of your endurance. Mm-hmm. What is your mentality? What do you have in the heart mm-hmm. that's going to keep you pressing on to reach that goal? And that's the goal of Christianity. We are to press on. And having done all, 
reading scripture, pacing the floor, doing whatever, <laughs> having done all. When you've done all and you still don't see anything, what does he say to do? Stand. 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 You yeah. do not quit. Quit. And, you know, Jerry Seville, I wrote it down, but I hear his voice saying quitting is not an option. Yep. Yeah. Quitting is not an option. Praise God. That's good. And that's what keeps me keeps me going. Praise God. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And Sorry. thank you, everyone, thank for you. tuning in to this week's podcast of Winning Conversations. Uh, make sure if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe, and then catch us next Friday for our next episode. All right. Go give them Jesus.